Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. And do you know that I've been saying that for four years now in a couple days. That's right, the day after Thanksgiving will be the four year mark that I started daily vlogging. Of course, I've been YouTubing for years and years, like 13 years, but the daily vlog is on its four year anniversary in just a couple days. How crazy is that? Well, today is another awesome day. We are gonna actually start breeding ball pythons. And what I mean by that is we're just gonna get males and females together. If you didn't see the video when we moved all of the females around. I'll put a card right up here. You can check that out and uh, see how we rearrange things to try to organize. And I'll just kind of go through in the fact that we're going to be putting males in with females and start talking about kind of my philosophy about snake breeding. Hey, you guys know my life is about the reptarium and education and all that stuff. But I have always been and still will always be a snake breeder by heart. And uh, I love this time of year. It's super exciting because again, when you start breeding snakes this time of the year, it's like every animal you think is going to produce, right? The expectations are super high. You never know what's going to happen, and it's just really a fun time of the year. So today, males going with females, and later on, we'll check and see if there's any early lockups. So remember how we actually have all of the males in order compared to what they're being bred to. So this is the number one male here. He's a pastel leopard clown ball python. And he's actually being bred to a pastel leopard clown female. I'm gonna go ahead and just set him in there. And that will be the first female of all these things. You can see all these ones. These are the ones that go here. He's gonna breed all these. And then we're on to next, which is the banana clown. So then we just go to literally cage number two and get the banana clown. And whoo, doggy, I tell you what, this is one beautiful snake. Again, female number one is a vanilla red stripe. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the male banana clown in there. And then I just kind of repeat that over. Now, a couple things. I'm going to have tags that that male will follow around every. So when he goes from this cage to this cage, that tag will go like this and so on and so forth so we can keep things together. Now, some people have said, why don't you barcode stuff or do some kind of a QR code type of thing, which can really work, to be honest. I know a lot of people did. We actually even invested in a software to do that about eight or nine years ago. The problem is I want to look at the cage. I want to see the information so in real time I know exactly what's going on. And we've talked about how the three big things that that really help you produce snakes are what? Follicles, feeding, and copulation, right? So I can see here, this one just fed, and basically now I can go through and say, all right, that's fed, now it's bred, now we got follicles. I can see it right there. I don't have to access a computer or look on my phone and see it on the front. I'm old school, that's the way I like to do it, but I can get so much more information by visually just looking at the cage. Now, hey, listen, it's maybe not as organized, but at the same time, for me, it's work, and that's the way we're gonna do it. So we're gonna get all of these males and with all of these females. <laughs> you can't, you can't put that on. When did I miss the opportunity? I was listening to you film, and really, it, there's just the three Fs. The three Fs? Yeah. What? So you said it was follicles, feeding, feeding. Yeah. All right, don't listen to that, kids. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys remember when we got drama of course right side up and upside down smiley face pied well this is the first year that drama is going to get bred and we're going to actually take him just to a pied female to start it's not a really big girl she's only about 1500 grams but she's absolutely gorgeous so hopefully pied to pied with recessive mutation means that they're all going to be pied uh you know unfortunately those pied emojis with a smiley face don't pass on but still it'll be pretty cool to hopefully get some offspring from drama finally i'm excited about this one you guys may remember about a year and a half ago that I unboxed a banana GHI and Lori didn't want me to keep it. Well, she finally let me keep it and it's up to size and I'm actually gonna take it to one of my favorite mutations of all. And that of course is the GHI Mojave female here. It'd be potential for like super GHIs and all kinds of different combinations there. So again, with that banana stuff, I can't imagine what a banana super GHI is gonna look like. It's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Basically what I'm gonna do in the beginning of the season is I really wanna get the males and females together for a 
about a week and a half. So normally we're gonna breed maybe four, five days a week, and then we're gonna give them a couple days off so that they can rest up and uh, get some food in them and stuff like that. But the, usually the first cycle, I really wanna get those males in and have a lot of time with those males kind of bouncing around, right? The more they're in there, it's gonna spur on females to wanna feed more, and feeding more is gonna grow follicle growth, which is gonna cause more copulation and all that type of stuff. So it's important to kind of give them a real good push in the beginning, right? So every day, that male is gonna get switched to a new female's cage, right? So it's only one day that he doesn't breed her, then he goes to another cage. If he does breed her, I'll typically give him a day off and then go back into the breeding cycle. But for this first cycle, they're gonna kind of do that every day for about eight or nine days before I give them their first break and feed them. So let's hope later on we can come back and check and get our first locks of the season. I know I mentioned that my black throat monitor typically is gonna be feeding on bugs, but I do wanna offer a pinky every now and then and just see if he's interested in, oh yeah, he's interested in it. That's for, and you guys dropped a ton of great comments about his name. But the one thing I forgot to tell you guys, you want another one, buddy? Oh my, this dude is a monster. Is that when these guys get bigger, I know you guys aren't gonna believe me about this, but when these guys get bigger, they smell like maple syrup. That's right, like almost like a pancake. So, so I'm trying to think of a name that kind of goes with that because when we're educating people, we can be like, hey, guess what? Take a sniff, and they're gonna be like, oh my God, it smells like a waffle with uh, maple syrup or something like that. So I'm thinking like maybe waffles or something on that lines, but let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. And uh, oh, and by the way, I did want to tell you, there's a storm that's gonna be coming, and that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to get the males in with females today because later on we're gonna be able to check it out and uh, and hopefully we'll get some breeding. Guess what guys? Just a couple days away from Black Friday. That's right, the day after Thanksgiving at midnight Thursday slash Friday morning. From midnight to midnight we have a Black Friday sale. It's like our 12th annual Black Friday sale. Every single thing on the site, bhbreptiles.com, is on sale. So if you're looking for whatever it is, I mean, anything that we have on the site, go to bhbreptiles.com. Again, savings on everything, only for 24 hours, midnight to midnight. So again, Black Friday, BHB, go check that out. That's it, all the males are in with females, and I'm not gonna lie to you, every year I make a mistake. And what I mean by that is that as I'm putting males in, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to put the male in the right spot. Now I have to rearrange everything once again. I was impressed, I mean, we didn't miss anything. Everything went 100% as planned, and uh, it's so much easier to organize. I'm telling you, if you do this type of stuff, organize now because it will save you so much time in the future. So I'm gonna give these guys maybe two or three hours, we'll come back and check on them. And by the way, we're gonna have a bunch of males that are like, you know, three, four year old males that are just kind of retired. New batch of males up this year. So we're gonna put a bunch of new males on the website, hopefully for the Black Friday sale. So again, bhbreptiles.com. Uh, and you can get a male if you're interested in breeding and you need something. They're really gonna be great animals. It's just now I have new males, I don't need them. So there's probably gonna be 30 or 40 males available that are adults. That would be, again, no older than five years, no younger than three years. So, uh, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, we'll come back here in a couple hours and check and see if we have any first locks. You know, big snakes. Big poops, right? But this is actually not a poop here. This is always interesting. This is what they call a urate, right? And look at how huge this is. I mean, that is just absolutely insane. This is actually basically like solidified urine. So again, what snakes do is that they will urinate, but they also have this solidified kind of calcified urine called a urate. And uh, Daisy is notorious for that. And uh, it doesn't really have a smell to it per se, maybe a little bit pee-like type smell, but it's not terrible. But I uh, just gotta get her clean up and get her ready because uh, there's always a lot of work around here. But again, whoo, she's coming out. She's saying, hey, what's up, Dad? Hey, you stay away. Whoo, I think that she's ready to eat. She just had a big rabbit just the other day, but I gotta be careful of her. Daisy, you're such a beautiful girl. I love her, but uh, always a lot of maintenance over here at the Reptarium. And like I mentioned, it always seems so glamorous to work with reptiles, and don't and all animals for that matter. And don't get me wrong, it is amazing, but the majority of the work you're gonna do is gonna be cleaning stuff up. I mean, this mandarin rat just shed out, and she kind of messed her cage up, and I just gotta clean her up. But look at this beautiful snake right here. I mean, holy moly. This is again, a Chinese, 
rat snake that is just absolutely stunning. This is from the Szechuan region, so they have a lot more yellow, a little bit more clean and stuff like that. But again, just doing maintenance, gotta always be cleaning cages up, cleaning poops up, cleaning sheds up, feeding, cleaning, watering, all that type of stuff. So uh, again, working with animals sometimes seems like a real glamorous job, but the truth is most of the time, it's just a lot of hard work. And as you can see guys, the storm is coming, the first snow of the year, and I've mentioned before that when you have a drop of barometric pressure, that's when you get a lot of copulations. So I'm assuming that this drop of barometric pressure, i.e. this snowstorm, is gonna cause some copulations. What do you say we go downstairs and uh, fingers crossed we find some males breeding? And again, with the fact that they've only been together for a very short period of time, it's hard to say that anything is gonna be breeding or not. So I'm just gonna kinda take a peek at all the stuff. So guess what, first cage, this is actually a pastel pie bread to just a head pie and we've already got our first lock so that's amazing so what I'm gonna do is just basically very gently close because I don't want to disturb them right I'm now gonna mark on the enclosure that it's breeding and I'll start to keep track of all of that type of stuff let's go on to number two this is actually a really cool pairing here this is a spy to an albino pied, but unfortunately they're not hooked up so it's uh, it's just exciting you know I can't believe we got our first lock of the year even just after a couple of hours of them being together. So again, just gonna kind of be going through everything. Oh, we got another lock. This is actually that really cool pairing. This is the first time this banana GHI has ever been in with a female. Literally the first time he's ever been in, bred to a GHI Mojave, and we have a lock. Oh my gosh, so that is always amazing. I tell you what, this storm definitely helped out. Continuing on, this guy is actually really cool. This is actually a bumblebee Fire Orange Dream, uh, bred to a Lemon Blast Orange Dream. Unfortunately, not hooked up, but that's okay. Uh, again, we're having some pretty good success already, and we only checked a handful of them. We've got another breeding here. This is actually an albino to a het albino. This is a first time male too. This is actually the banana super chocolate bred to a chocolate pinstripe. Looks like he's got some courtship going on. So we started off strong and now we're kind of we're kind of faltering a little bit here. Oh, we got a lock. This again, this is a first time animal. This is that pastel bamboo vanilla and it's bred to a fire. So I'm gonna just shut this really quick. A first time male. Again, that first breeding for the first time male is so important because once he starts breeding, now he's gonna be on a three or four month breeding thing. So that is amazing that two of our first time males are already hooked up today. You can see this is a good example of a male that's trying, he's courting, he's riding the female. Got a little bit of thing, but there's no actual lock, which is completely fine because the truth is is that these first breedings probably aren't going to do a whole lot for production but what they're going to do is turn the females on to follicular growth as well as just having a male in with a female oftentimes causes her to feed more and again I've talked about the fact that more food equals more follicle growth means more copulation and then that means more potential for production so uh, that is the first start right so the copulations here really aren't going to be that incredible for us but what they are going to do is start the process and you've got to remember Remember, we're literally just a couple hours into the breeding season, right? So we got a long, long way to go. This is another male that is kind of looking like some courtship here, but doesn't have any actual locks going on. So uh, just a couple more females to check. And then if that's it, it looks like we got another lock here. So we got another lock here. So yeah, things are going really well. I didn't expect to have this many males and females locked up this early in the season, just literally a couple of hours into it. So uh, that's it. Looks like maybe about eight or 10 locks. That is amazing for the first time. Over the next few months, we are definitely gonna have some good, good production. So uh, I'm excited, guys. The season has started. Absolutely amazing that we have so many breedings so early in the season. So I have a feeling that 2021 is gonna be a banger of a year. If you guys enjoyed this video, here is a playlist of uh, snake breeding stuff all kinds of stuff you can take a look at if you don't mind right up here you can subscribe to my podcast channel called checking in i hope you're subscribed over here to this vlog channel if you're not hit the subscription button and turn all your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow